So let's talk a little bit about Danaher. So this is yeah. a company I'm interested to learn about. Yeah. So basically one of those companies that's this huge conglomerate and they serve science, basically. Think of a company like Danaher, a company like Thermo Fisher, and a company like uh, Abbott Laboratories. They all have different products that help with science. For whatever reason, this industry has a lot of mergers and acquisitions, and that's really a race to size and scale. And Danaher and Thermo Fisher are really leading that charge. And so as an example of some of the stuff, they'll do like research and medical products that's a huge thing for Danaher. Well, uh, looking at last year, it was about 17, almost 18 billion out of their 22 billion in revenue came from this research and, and medical products. So you can think of things like anything that's going to be in a laboratory, instruments to help with testing and research and development. And so a lot of their end markets, you know, you know, basically anywhere between governmental companies to the research and development teams at different companies and everything in between that has to do with science. And so there's a lot of interesting growth drivers as far as, you know, coming from end markets, biotech's a huge driver. And, and that's something they talk about on the call. Their biotech businesses, Cytiva and Pal, those are really their two big businesses in biotech. And they're seeing a COVID boost. The whole business has seen a COVID boost. You have a lot of stuff from the COVID testing side. So that's going to be what their business, you know, called Cephade. And so they do those form one COVID tests. They're also getting huge boosts in revenues from the vaccine rollout. And so a lot of their products help support what's going on there. That's kind of like their big driver. They're, they're kind of pushed. They moved towards this whole biotech exposure and where before they're maybe a little more diversified. Thermo Fisher has a very similar exposure where now they're moving more towards the biotech side. Looking at what they see in the future. So I mentioned the biotech businesses, they see something like 6% growth long-term from the biotech businesses that includes Cytiva and PAL. And um, they see them kind of being in line with the market and maybe taking some market share. That was something they, they mentioned in the call. They see long-term that they could be taking market share in biotech. And obviously that's a huge growth driver. So they mentioned here where they see their long-term performance, MSD, that's mid single digits plus growth. So in the past, you know, five to 6% now, they're seeing acceleration and they could see, you know, 7% would not be out of the range of possibility. They saw 6% long-term for biotech with a huge boost in the short term from everything that's going on with COVID. The diagnostics part of the business is back to pre-pandemic kind of area and life sciences is starting to see research funding come back up as people return to the labs. In the quarter, they saw huge boosts. EPS was $1.54 for the quarter. It was a 33% year over year increase. Revenues are up 23%. And for the full year, non-GAAP core revenue growth rate will be more than 20% for the year. So that non-GAAP core revenue growth rate, the reason why that's so important for a company like Danaher is they are a M&A acquirer. And so what that means is they're buying up all these small businesses and using that to drive growth. Yeah, I know that's really one of the things that they're known for is is being a big M&A player. Is that kind of normal in this kind of biotech kind of world? So is Thermo Fisher and some of the other competitors, are they kind of in the same kind of ballpark? Yeah, uh, so Thermo Fisher, Danaher, they're both pursuing that same kind of plan for making value for shareholders. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's interesting because these, these businesses are really like the picks and shovels of the biotech industry. I mean, biotech is so notoriously volatile oh, yeah. and you know it used to be a hot thing three four years ago everybody was wanted to say that they were a biotech expert and they knew the hot, next hot biotech company really a lot of it because it's so new and, and it's all driven on innovation these companies they kind of come and go and they have huge hopes and a lot of capital gets funded into their developments and whether it actually returns you know, becomes profitable for these companies is kind of like, it can be like a crapshoot, but who does benefit kind of like the gold miners back in the gold rush, the people selling the picks and shovels. And that's right where Dan Hare and Thermo Fisher are at. 